Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to our webinar today, where we're gonna talk about how to create and run scripts with uh, analysis options for Tago.io. We'll last about one hour or less, where we're gonna cover the main points related first about the uh, overview, then we're gonna talk about the analysis, of course. We're gonna cover uh, introduction, and showing what are the features you can use to create great applications with Tago. Then we're going to show how to work with the script editor, where it gets much easier to generate script now. Then Roberto is going to present some examples with the script, where you can find the example, download, edit, and then finally how to build the solution. Also, at the end, we're going to have a Q&A a section to answer all your questions. This event will be recorded and will be available online after the event. Also, you should have in your screen an area where you can chat with us. You can make any comment, suggestion, or question, and we are going to try to answer them in real time, or at least you're going to answer at the end of the event. So feel free to make any question uh, anytime. So let me start by sharing what, what's Tago.io again. So Tago is a software company located here in Raleigh, North Carolina, where we deliver our product to a platform as a service where companies can build solution on top of that to connect the devices. So the goal is to connect the data from sensors to the business. So we deliver a series of features that can be used to connect your devices. I'm Fabio Rosa, the CEO and co-founder of Tago.io. And uh, we are going to have also Roberto Canoff, that our software developer, that will be doing the presentation for the technical side. Let me show the key components of our platform. First of all, all we want to do is to basically connect the sensor that's located in the left side to your business. So we can do this in a different way, but basically you need to have to offer the key components. To get, for example, information like location, temperature, uh, count events, alert, and so on, we need some kind of a hardware. Although we don't provide the hardware, we have a lot of uh, drivers and connectors that make this information coming from the sensor ready to come to your account to be processed and make available for you and for your users. So we have five elements, and Roberto later gonna show this in the platform. First, we have the device management, where you can connect the device with uh, secrets, with tokens. You can store the data online, so you'll be your account. All data will be available for you to download, upload, uh, remove, and share. Then you'll have uh, a, a main point here of our discussion today is how to create analysis. This basically is where you're going to have your secret sauce, right? There, where you have an intelligence of your system so you can add more value. For example, you can run real time analysis here. Of course, we have the dashboards and integration. You can integrate these with SMS, email, or other any other system that we're going to talk here today. Tago has a lot of features. Here is a short list of the key things that we have. For example, we have a data retention policy. For example, if you want to keep the data just for one day or one month, you can do this automatically. You don't need to run scripts for that. You can share data. You can have a tag. Uh, management, so you can identify your customer and by region, by name, and so on. Today, we have a lot of applications in different verticals. So Tago is not used just for one application or other. In fact, a lot of applications are designed by our customers, our integrators, in different areas, like uh, for agriculture, for code chain management, for transportation, logistic, uh, appliance industry, equipment manufacturers. So what differentiates 
tag from other is not a kind of one feature or other, but it's really the set of features. For example, more than the IoT, at the tag we implement also the user management. So you are able to manage those who are gonna be co-develop your application. Also, we added the explore section. That's basically one place where users can download a complete IoT application. Also, we add the data retention, user backup to reduce the cost. So you don't need to store all the data online. You can go and uh, download the data for a backup. Also, we have uh, very good features, very easy to use to share the dashboards uh, publicly or privately. And of course, we create a lot of uh, smart connectors to connect your application with your other services. Tago has been built basically to do two things very well. First, to build the application and to share the application. So we make made available a lot of widgets that you can use to share the information from your devices. For example, build widgets that uh, you can show your data in the form of tables, dynamic tables or static tables. Also, we create maps where you can show the image or links. Also, we have uh, heat maps, uh, dials, uh, videos, and the other capability. When this is done, you can easily share this application. You can share from your computer manually, from the mobile app also manually, or you can create a script and share your application with all your customers at the same time. Let's say that you have uh, 1,000 customers and you want to invite all of them to access your system, you can do this automatically. You can take a look in our website and take a look in the use cases that you have available and that they are running in real time. We believe that we are gonna cover most of the things natively with Tago, but we know that there are other applications in the system uh, somewhere that uh, is not part of Tago, but for that we create APIs and those APIs are able to connect easily with your uh, external system. For example, you can read the data uh, in real time from a spreadsheet, from Google, from Microsoft, and bring this to the system and compare with the information that uh, your sensors are, are send information. Also, you can integrate uh, with a CRM. So for example, if you want to show that, uh, uh, identify opportunity to sell, let's say more compressor, uh, more of uh, some fuel, you can have uh, a sensor in the equipment and this equipment will detect opportunity based on your rules and sending opportunity for the CRM, for the sales team, that you say something like, hey, you have a sales opportunity here because this customer already used 10,000 hours. This equipment, you can sell uh, equipment here. So you can do something without integration, but you can generate, for example, a report. You can send it for your customers every morning, let's say uh, 7 a.m. or every Monday morning, a report with the issues uh, or opportunities that uh, the equipment that they are monitoring are, are bringing. Also, you can use uh, key mail, uh, map files. So it's possible to generate scripts for that. So instead of just sending an email with some description, you can send a file where the customer from the other side are gonna receive your email from Tago and they can click and see in real time, time in a map uh, the situation of the equipment. So there are a lot of opportunity to expand your solution. Later here, uh, Roberto is gonna talk about uh, the platform, all the details. So one thing that I want to bring here is that you can create a free account at tago.io. That is an uh, option to sign up for free. But if you're a developer, make sure that you click on I am a developer option. Because when you do that, you have all the tools available for you. If you don't select these, you're gonna just have the option to see application that others are sharing with you. In case you want to change this option, you always can go to your account, you go my account, 
and then in, uh, in the visualization type and uh, change for uh, I am a user or I am a developer. So you always have this option. Just make sure you pick the right one. Well, today we're going to talk about the analysis, right? So what, what's the analysis? Analysis basically is our feature that give uh, option to create and run script to manipulate data in real time. So basically it's get your application to the next time, next level, because basically you can process data that are coming from the devices. Okay? For example, you have a Zigfox or LoRa or Wi-Fi device sent the data. Every time that sensor sent the data, it triggers uh, analysis and do some calculation. This can be done to parse the data uh, to create reports, generate notification, or group of emails. That's also very important. Uh, you see that you have options in the action that you can create an email, but normally it's one or two emails. But here you can generate a group of emails. You can run the integration from the analysis, as I mentioned before. And very important, you can use the analysis to communicate with different services. Let's say that you have a sensor that uh, is uh, inside the house, but your algorithm would need to have external temperature. So you can go and run an API to get the weather forecast, for example, okay, or the gas price or energy price or anything that's outside you can use through the analysis. So there are a lot of things that are simple that can be done, but also you can have a more complex things inside of the analysis. For example, you can run linear regression to try to understand about the correlation of things or even learn machine learning uh, and the image processing. So basically there is uh, no limits about what you can do uh, as much as you can simply code this information using uh, JavaScript as Robert is gonna share with you. So now I will, I will invite Roberto so he can get from here and talk about uh, details of the analysis. Roberto, go ahead. Hello everyone, I'm Roberto. And I'm going to talk, talk about analysis in real time. Uh, by the end of this, this presentation, you guys will know how to create uh, a parse from a device, from uh, a LoRa or a Sigfox device. It doesn't even matter. It's a generic parse. And we are going to show how to create uh, a notification as well if something goes wrong with uh, let's say a uh, temperature gets too high, so we are going to to have a notification on that, and we are also learn how to uh, how to read data from that device and process that data to create uh, different data from that. So before I start sh uh, sharing my screen and showing you how to work with that, let me, let me just explain to you how analysis work through this diagram. So uh, if you can see my cursor over here, I have a, uh, we have here a diagram showing how to, how the data flows at Tagle. So on the left, we have a sensor or an API or a widget form that's uh, how data gets to Tagle. So mainly through sensors. Then if we follow this line, the data is saved on a bucket and this, this, uh, this book can store your data. You can see your variables, and I'll talk about that later. And also, this, this data can go here and trigger an action. Let's say that you have an action, uh, a trigger for your temperature. When your temperature gets too high or too low, uh, let's say you want to, to do something on that. And these, uh, these analysis can do. This is a script that runs on Tagro. So basically you can send SMS, you can create and send emails, you can post to another endpoint. Uh, you can use machine learning as, as Fabio said. And you can do a whole lot of things because it, basically it's a script that runs on, on Tagro. So you can code anything you want. And also you can save data back to your buckets if you, if you see here. 
uh, we start the data on buckets, then you can run the analysis, and then you can store data back. And another way of running analysis is by a schedule. So basically, you can you can ask Tago to run an analysis every minute, every hour, or uh, the, the, you, you can choose the time. You can customize the time. So let's say every two weeks, you want to, to send a report. So you can create a, a schedule that does that. So every time, uh, every time your schedule is is set, Tiger will send that report or do any calculations. Uh, here uh, we have an editor to edit these analysis. So they, they are basically JavaScript. They are Node JS scripts, and uh, I'm going to talk about audit log next. So here, uh, I'm going to share your, my screen. So uh, I'm going to show you the admin. That's admin.tag.io. Let's just wait a second for the screen to, to render for you guys. OK, so uh, if you can see here, this is my dashboard. This is a, a sample dashboard that converts data from, uh, from a device that sends a payload like this. Uh, this is a MSP and, and LSP data. It's a hexadecimal data. And this data is divided in two parts. The first two, the first part is the temperature, and the next part here is the humidity. Of course, you, you can have any kind of sensors sending data from your device, but this is just a generic example. So uh, basically, what Tago does is read this data, run an analysis, and save this data back. Oh, by the way, my device is sending data every minute. So uh, you, you will see the dashboard here changing in real time. Before I show you the, how, it, how everything works, let me just show you here. We have a tutorial. OK. Uh, this, uh, I, I will. I will get you the link of the tutorial in the end, but basically this is a tutorial on how to parse payload into actual variables. You, if you go to our documentation, you can find this very easily. And here we have a diagram. Let me just scroll back here. So uh, this is a diagram showing how we are going to parse this data. First, we have the device over here on the left. And the device sends data, like uh, this is a raw payload, hexadecimal. And this data is saved on the bucket, and it triggers an action. This action is triggered, and it runs an analysis. So this analysis is basically a script that reads the, the raw payload and converts it into temperature and humidity. So we have here the temperature and humidity, and it saves on the, on the bucket. So after our data is saved on the bucket, we are going to show this data in a dashboard. So this is, uh, this is all this process is done in real time. Every time the device sends data, it, in, a, in a few milliseconds, it will be shown on your dashboard. So let me go back here. Basically, uh, I created two different uh, tabs over here. So basically, you have your device sending this data like this. And you, you don't want to show your clients these, uh, this payload because people won't understand this. So you basically need to create something like this, that you have the humidity here. Uh, we have like 65% right now. Then you have the temperature. And I created, a, I call it temperature hist history, but it's uh, just a chart showing the, the, last, uh, the last 30 or so uh, readings of the temperature. And here we have the last 30 or so reading of uh, humidity. So to do that, uh, before, I, before I, I show you how to do that, I'm going to explain to you how our tools work. I need to talk to you about devices, buckets, analysis, and actions. So uh, to send data to Tago, you need a device. Basically, uh, we have here um, uh, this device section. Devices are, um, are a representation of your real device. Basically, it's a, a virtual device that is a representation of your device. Let me just show you one very 
interesting feature over here. So if you create your, your device, let's say we have, say, Fox. I'm not creating it right now, but let, let me just show you. So you, if you create your device over here, you can send data to, to Tagle normally. And also, let's say that you know, your device is uh, Sigfox or LoRa that uh, sends data in uh, a, a couple of times a day because you have a limited amount of, of usage. You can use our device emulator to send data. Let's say that you need to simulate some data at the moment. You can come here and say, ah, let's say I, I want to send temperature with the value 71. You can just select your device over here. I have a device test. And then you can send data. Um, so what this does, it will send the data in the format that your device would be sent to Tagle. And then you can build your applications and you don't have to worry about your device at all times. So you just uh, you can simulate it here. So let me talk about buckets for a second. This, uh, we use buckets as our database. So you don't have to worry about database concepts. You just need to know that Tableau stores your data on buckets here. And here you can see your variables. So for example, I have here a bucket called Laura sample device. If I, if I see here, if I click here, I can see that I have 716 variables, not variables, but uh, register in my in, in my bucket. So I have uh, 716 records. And if I click here, I can see the variables that, that is sending, uh, that is getting from my devices. So I have the variable payload, my device is, is sending this variable, and then I have humidity, temperature, and then I have average, minimum, and maximum that I'm going to be showing you later. So basically, here you can, uh, let's say I don't want to, I don't want to have these variables anymore. You can go here and de delete variables or you can clean your book. If it's a development book, you can empty your book. And you can share it. Let's say you, you have an application where uh, people, f people with different devices can send data to the same book. You can do this by sharing. And then in here you can see the devices that are sending data to this to this bucket. So basically, and of course you can have you can create backups and you can um, you can retain the data from the amount of time that you want. As, as Fabio said, you can let's say that this book is just for real time uh, calculations. And you just need the, the data to arrive here and trigger actions or uh, show them on a dashboard. You don't need to store them. You can uh, you can choose to to leave your your data only available for a day, a week, a month, or forever. <coughs> so uh, <coughs> another thing that you can do with buckets, uh, as I mentioned, you can have multiple book, multiple devices that are linked to the same bucket. So let's say, uh, as I said before, buckets are our database. So uh, depending on your application, you can choose to have one database or multiple databases. So basically, the, that's the same idea. Uh, going up next, we have analysis. Uh, this, is, uh, this is what we're going to focus on this webinar. So the analysis at Tagle is a way to say that we run scripts at Tagle. So for for your applications, you can code them. For, for example, if I go to an analysis over here, I can show you that we have scripts. So these are uh, JavaScript, uh, Node, JS scripts. Uh, we have a lot of examples that I can show you. I'll be back here later. And let me just continue. We are going to talk a lot about analysis. So I'll just go to actions, and then I'll come back here. So here, actions are what triggers the analysis or other things. For example, let's say that I want, let me create a sample, sample action over here. Uh, actions basically can push notifications, send emails, send SMS, run analysis, publish to MQTT, or post data to, an, to another endpoint using HTTP. PS. So uh, today we're going to use analysis. Basically, 
you can uh, set up an action that runs an analysis. And what this does, whatever you want to code on your analysis, so you, the possibilities are endless. You can export data, you can uh, create reports, as we said before. And here, uh, we have another section called Explore. This, this is where you deploy your applications. Let's say that you have uh, a sensor and you want to build an application for that sensor so people can buy it and they can go here and install the, this application and just type the serial number of your sensors and the application will be running on uh, your client's account. Okay, so these are the basic tools from for developing applications. So if you are a developer, you will have access to these five tools. And if you are if you're not a developer, you won't have access to the dashboards. Okay. So if you if you, uh, if you pick, I am a developer, you have these developing tools. So uh, now let me show you how Tago uh, takes this raw payload from uh, from your device and converts it into temperature and humidity. Uh, this, uh, this image over here is just a representation of our payload. As I said before, we have the temperature in the first, uh, the first part of the payload. So the temperature divided by 100 is our temperature in Fahrenheit. And here, the second part, we have uh, the humidity divided by 10 is our real humidity in percentage. To do that, to create this, this conversion, we have to create an analysis. So I'm going to show you step by step on how to do that. So here, let's go to analysis. I will create a new analysis. Let me call it generic parse. It could be Sigfox parse or LoRa or whatever kind of device you have. Uh, here we have the time interval to run this script. Uh, as I said before, we have two ways of running scripts from an action or on a on a schedule. So I don't want to to run this analysis on a schedule. I want to run this every time my device sends data. So I will disable the timer, and I'm going to show you how to trigger this. Uh, I don't I don't need a description for this. And here we have an option to run this analysis from Tago or from an external server. So if you choose to run the analysis on, a, on an external server, you can uh, set it up in any, any programming language they, they want. Let's say you want to code in Java or Python or whatever language you use. So you can run, you can run your scripts on your own machines. And let me just save this over here because I want to show you. So here, uh, this is, if you, want, if you are going to use the analysis uh, outside Tago, you need this token. This is uh, this token links the analysis at Tago from the analysis on your computer. So basically, you need to use this. And we have a lot of videos on uh, on how to work with analysis and how to uh, run analysis on your computer. This is great to to debug it as well. So uh, here we have the script section. This is our uh, code editor. Here we, you can load scripts from your computer. Uh, language, we currently uh, support Node.js, but on the future, we're going to use to support Python and Java. Uh, and we have a few examples over here. Let me show you the hello world. Basically, let me just put it on full screen. Just a second. OK. So uh, this is a script. This is a sample script called hello world. Here we have a. Uh, an explanation on how to work this script out. And we have some comments on how to work this, how to work with this. And here we have just some logs. So whatever, whenever you run your analysis, you will have these logs, okay? But not for now, for this, uh, for this example, we are going to use another script called generic parse. If you go here and you, we have generic payload parse. Okay, so uh, here uh, as well, we have some, uh, we have here a small text showing how to 
work with this script. And we have a tutorial on this script. This is the tutorial I showed you in the beginning. Basically, what this script does is it gets the, the variable from your, from your device and creates those uh, different variables, uh, temperature and humidity. So here, this is the main function of the script. I'm just going through it quickly. Uh, here we create uh, a variable called payload, and this variable reads the variable that comes from your device. So if your device doesn't send payload, if, let's say if it sends data or I don't know, whatever variable the device sends, you can just change it here and your variable will be stored on our, on our variable called payload. And here we created a substring from the the zero to four, so basically the four first digits digits of the of the string payload, and here we have another string from the fourth to the eighth. So basically, we have the first and the second part, and the, this is called hex temperature and hex humidity. And here we uh, I don't know if you remember, but we need to divide the temperature by 100, and we divide the humidity by 10. So the temperature. And we convert it to number and divide it by 100. And the humidity, we convert it to a number and divide it by 10. Then uh, we have the temperature and humidity ready to send it to Tagle. So we need to create the variables to be sent to Tagle in the format that Tagle accepts. So here we have a variable called temperature. And we have the value is the temperature that we, we created before. And here we have a, the unit that it's C at the moment. And well, you can change it to F if you want or anything. And we have the variable humidity with the value that we created before humidity and the unit is percentage. So, uh, and then we need to send this data to Tagle. So we create these two variables and they need to be sent to Tagle. So uh, to do that, we need a device. So we create a new device, and we need to take to get a device token. Let me just go do that just a second. Let me exit the full screen over here. OK. So to, do, to get a device token, there is, uh, there is a tutorial on how to do that. If you go to our tutorial, it's very simple. But so let me show you. You can create, you can click on device. I just open it on a, a new tab. And here we have our device over here. And in fact, I need to create a device before. Let me just create it. Let's say Fox parse or generic, generic parse. Let me save it. OK. So here we have a section called tokens. And then we'll the, the token, the, there is a, a generated token for you already. So you can just go here and copy the token. OK, let me go back to my script. And I can go to my token over here. Of course, you can use environment variables if you want. If you don't want to, uh, people usually don't put the, the tokens inside the analysis. This is just a, a simple example. So after we have the device created, we need to insert the data. So we do device.insert our variables, and then uh, we do a context.log to show the logs over here. So let me just save this. OK. So basically, we have created an analysis that is your, your raw payload and converts it into temperature and humidity. Now, we want to say to Tagle, uh, every time our device sends data, that we want to to run this script and save these new variables. To do that, we need to go to actions. So, do actions over here. Okay, and let's create a new action. Okay, so this action will be called uh, parse. Okay, and what action is it going to be taking? Uh, Let's say we want to run analysis. And which analysis are we going to, to run? We are going to run our generic parse. And here, and when are we going to run this analysis? These, we have a section called trigger that you can set it up. 
here, let's say you have the variable. Let me just select over here. Uh, here we have multiple devices now. I have Laura sample device and generic parse. So I created the generic parse now. Let me click on generic parse over here. We don't have any variables from this device yet, but let me say that our variable is called payload. Okay, and now this is generic parse. I'll click on here to send this variable. This variable doesn't exist at Tagle yet, but uh, as soon as the device sends data, it will be created. On condition, let's say you can create some conditions over here. For example, let's say the data they want is less than, greater than, equals to, or different from. In fact, in this case, we are going to use any. So anytime our device sends data, it will trigger this action. And we are not going to lock the trigger. I'm going to go back to this lock trigger uh, later, but for now we are not going to use this. So basically, now that what we are doing is we are setting up an action that every time our device called our device generic parse sends data to the variable payload, any data that it sends, it will trigger and run the analysis. So let me save it. Okay. So we are all set now, and if we go here, oh, sorry, um, backward. If we go here, uh, we can see that every time our device sends data, it will be parsed into the humidity and temperature. So as I said before, my device is sending data every, every minute. So uh, you can see that data changing in real time. And to create, to you can create and modify these uh, these widgets and add new widgets. For example, let's see on my temperature. Now it's F, but uh, if it were, um, if you need to change the unit, you can just change it over here to let's say that this is Celsius, not Fahrenheit. So I need to change that one. And then if you if you want to change the type of the the widget, you can just go here and say you need to change to show a different widget. You can create new widgets, of course, uh, add new widget effect. So this is uh, just an explanation and a quick tutorial on how to how to send data and parse this data. Now I'm going to show you how to create an action that triggers uh, triggers and pushes you a notification if the temperature uh, gets above some some value that that we, we don't want that to happen so we, let's see so to to warn the user when our temperature is too high we need to create another action so you can create as many actions as you want let's say that we are going to create an action here called temperature warning And what action is it going to take? It's going to push a notification, but of course you can send emails and SMS and the other options. Let's say that we want to push a notification with the title temperature, temperature warning. And the message, let's say that we, the temperature is, and we are going to use our uh, the value that comes from the variable. We can use uh, the variable, the, the value, the unit, time, and location. You can uh, just take the example here. So, and when will we trigger? Let's see here, when our device called generic parse sends the variable temperature in here. And what condition do I want to trigger this, this action? Ah, when my temperature gets greater than, let's say, we need to change the, select the type of data, it's a number. So when our data say, gets greater than, uh, let's say, 49. So if our data is 50 or above, we want to be notified. So these, as I, showed you before, we have a block trigger after this action is taken. What this does is, let's say your device sends 50 and we set it up to 49. 
you will be notified. And let's say your device sends in two minutes or one minute. It is um, this trigger this switch on. What it does, when your device sends this, this data, it will be locked, so your trigger will not work anymore. And then you need to set when you want to reset your trigger. So basically, we do the same thing here with the ver variable temperature. So when your device, your temperature gets less than let's say 40, let's say it's normalized. So if your device sends data and it's 50 or, or more than 49 in fact, and it, it will lock the trigger and the trigger will not be uh, notifying you every time. And when your device sends data that is less than 40, let's say, uh, let's say the, the temperature normalized or let's say 45 over here. And your, your trigger will be released, and if your device send, gets to 49 or 50 again, you'll be notified again. So let me just save this over here. Okay. And let me go back to the temperature. Okay, over here. Now Fabio is going to, to force uh, data to, to be sent at 50 or more than 50, and you'll see that we are going to receive a notification over here. Okay, so here you can see that we have 50. Uh, I'm, I have my notifications muted at the moment because I'm on a presentation, but you can see here that we have a number one over here. And on my phone, of course, I have tag installed, so I, I was notified on my phone as well. So if I click here, you can see that the temperature is too high, the temperature is 50.34. Okay, so uh, let me just show you one more thing before I finish up with the with the presentation. Let's say that we want to create a um, an average of the temperature that we are sending. So to do that, we just need to create a uh, calculation from from the data that you are receiving. So let me go to create another analysis. I go to an analysis, create a new one. Um, I have already one of this, but no problems. So I'm going to disable the timer. But this this would be a very good example of how to use the timer. Let's say your device sends data once a day. So I, I can choose here to just to trigger the analysis once a day. But in fact, I'm going to disable the timer right now. So uh, this script is going to run on Tyrell. And I'm also using another example. We have a few examples over here, if you want to check them out. So I'm going to use minimum, maximum, and average. So you guys can uh, access these, these examples and take a look in, at how they work. So basically, these, uh, this example reads the, value, the variable's temperature. So it gets the values from that and do some, does some calculations and get you the minimum temperature, the maximum temperature, and it gets you the average temperature as well. From uh, This is from one day, but you can change that for, for whatever you want. Let's say if you want to, to get data from the last, or last hour, you just change it here. So uh, for this analysis to work, you need a device token as well. There is some instructions over here on how to get your device token, so you can just follow them. I think I, I still have my device token over here, so on my clipboard. Yeah, I do. Let me just save it here. Uh, this example uses the environment variables, so you can pass data to to your scripts uh, through our environment variables. So in this case, we we are passing through the device token, and we are going to use to pass this token to that. So if you if you come here again to the script, you can see that we have the environment variables, 
And then we have the environment variable and we have the device token over here. So uh, let me show you the console over here. This is where you can see your logs. So let me run this search. Okay, so uh, no result. Just a second, I should be. Let me take the other device token. And this, because the other one doesn't have the just a second, let me go back to the analysis. So if you if you see in the console over here, we have no result found for the average calculation because my device, the other device is not sending data. So if I go here and change the device token, it's the other one. Let's test one. Okay. Same here. So let me just go back here and run my script again. Okay. Now let me go here in the console. I have the log over here, temperature average. Let me just refresh it. Here. We have temperature average updated, maximum and minimum updated. So uh, my, this analysis just read the uh, the data from from our variable called temperature, created the average, minimum, and maximum. So if you go to our dashboard over here, let's go to this this tab that we have more options. Let me add a new um, a new widget. Let's add a gauge, a solid one, and let's say that we have this is the temperature average. So you see that here we have, let me just, you can change the configuration of your number format to better display your data. So if you here, if you see here, you can do that in the script as well. If you want to, to uh, trim your data or round your data, you can, you can do that as well. Let me add the uh, a gauge for the minimum and the effect the maximum is left. Now the minimum gauge solid. Okay, so. Basically, we have a device sending this payload to Tago, and this the uh, Tago is parsing this data, getting the temperature from the first half and the humidity from the second half, saving it in two different variables. Here we have humidity and temperature, and then we are going we are showing the the last 20 or 30 uh, temperature readings and humidity readings. And then we have an action that is triggering, triggering uh, temperature warnings over here. And we have an, uh, another analysis that is uh, just getting you the, the temperature average, maximum and minimum. Of course, you can, you can create any kind of calculations over here. You can even use uh, machine learning to predict, let's say, that you, you want to refill uh, some kind of container or uh, if you want to predict uh, sales or anything, you can create um, analysis based on machine learning. And you can uh, read data from images. You, you can process image and video, and et cetera. There's a lot of things you can do with analysis. Let me just show you one more thing here. Let's say that we want to just change the name of the variable to so we change it here. And that's all. I'm going to show you just a few things. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to show you the website. We are running out of time over here. So 
if you want to get started to Tago, you can just go to Tago.io and then you can get started over here. You can create your account. Let me just show you the resources over here. We have uh, developer resources where you can see our documentation. We have on how to get started, concepts, tutorials, MQTT, and lots more. Uh, our SDKs, we have the Node and Java SDKs uh, for sure use our repositories for those. We have a uh, Slack community. We have our change logs over here and our system status. So uh, another thing that is very important here in resources, our video part, we have lots of videos. So we have a few demos of how Tiger works and we have some training on uh, how to do um, a lot of things at Tagle, like we have introduction, working with buckets, and you can see the whole list over here. And we have the webinars, and these webinars will be posted here in the future. And we have how-tos that are very short videos on how to do simple, very easy stuff. It's uh, mostly one or two minutes video. And so let me get back to Fabio, and we are going to go to the uh, Q&A. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Roberto. Uh, pretty sure that was very good explanation, uh, introduction for those more about how to create analysis. Uh, of course, uh, that's uh, just a 50 minutes presentation. And uh, as Roberto mentioned, there are a lot of materials online. Also, there is opportunity uh, for you to follow our community. If you go to our website and uh, click on the Slack, uh, you can get in our Slack community where we really try to answer very quickly any question. Even if you are doing something different, I just want uh, to know our perspective. We'll be, we'll be very glad to help you. Also, uh, we have uh, ticket management. Uh, if you go to the website and uh, looking for contact us, uh, you can uh, post uh, your question and uh, we will be working uh, on, on that. We are very happy that uh, you had the opportunity to uh, attend this webinar first. Uh, we are going to forward uh, with an email and do a follow-up with you soon. And again, meanwhile, feel free to contact us at uh, any time uh, about anything that uh, you do believe we can help you with. Okay, our contact is here in this page, myself, Fabio, and uh, Roberto about technical details. So we'll be closing this section. I appreciate the participation and have a great day. Thank you.